Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of bipolar ID. The this work was published in JAX by the Lou Group. Bipolar ID is a sester terpene that was first isolated by the Zhang Group in 2019 from bipolaris fungus. Initial studies do not show any interesting bioactive properties, but these have been limited by a lack of material and related compounds have shown promise in medicinal chemistry. The compound is part of the Ophiobolin class of terpenes and is thought to be biosynthesized from Ophiobolin C in a process involving a transannular carbon-carbon bond formation between C6 and C10. The most unique challenge in the synthesis of this molecule is the 5555 fused ring system, which forms a concave central framework. At the centre of this polycyclic ring system, there are three contiguous quaternary stereocenters, two of which occur at tricyclic bridgeheads. Appended to this ring system, there is also a chiral side chain, which must be constructed stereoselectively. The strategy to construct this molecule involves a 6 plus 2 cycloaddition that would lay the foundation for the polycyclic structure, while a heck coupling could introduce the final ring. A Grignard reaction could be used to install the chiral side chain, which could be further elaborated on using a Suzuki coupling. So let's start the synthesis with an addition elimination sequence. This reaction starts with the deprotonation of cyclopentadiene and the resulting anion then attacks the aldehyde. The intermediate can then be deprotonated, promoting an elimination reaction to form an alkene. This compound was then taken forward to a hydroboration reaction. They used 9-BBN, which is a sterically hindered borane that selectively adds to the terminal alkene with the boron moiety adding to the less sterically hindered side. This was then oxidized using sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide. The peroxide adds to the boron to form a borate and this intermediate then undergoes a migration forming a carbon oxygen bond. Hydroxide can then act as a nucleophile towards the boron, eliminating it to produce a primary alcohol upon workup with a 75% yield over two steps. Taking this forward, this hydroxyl group was once again oxidized, this time with PDC. The alcohol attacks the dichromate and the resulting intermediate eliminates an equivalent of dipyridinium chromate. An intramolecular hydrogen abstraction then occurs, liberating chromic acid and producing the target aldehyde in a 60% yield. With the aldehyde installed, the molecule was then primed to take part in the critical 6 plus 2 cycloaddition. This uses a chiral pyrrolidine catalyst and benzoic acid to first produce an enamine. This enamine can then take part in the 6 plus 2 cycloaddition, forming the tricyclic product in a 77% yield with 98% EE. Computational studies into the mechanism of this reaction suggest that this bond formation is not concerted and instead follows an asynchronous stepwise pathway. The enamine undergoes an intramolecular addition into the alkene, forming an intermediate with a cyclopentadienyl anion. This then attacks the aminium intermediate, forming another carbon-carbon bond to complete a five-membered ring. The pyrrolidine can then be protonated and eliminated, forming a new alkene in conjugation with the other double bonds present in the molecule. Hydrochloric acid is then added, and this hydrolyzes the acetal to form the tricyclic ketone. In the next step, the position alpha to the ketone was alkylated. This reaction used potassium tertiary to form the thermodynamic enolate on the more substituted side of the ketone. This then attacked an alkyl iodide, with the reaction occurring on the less sterically hindered convex side of the molecule. Despite significant optimization, they could only obtain the product in a 44% yield. This could be attributed to the sterically hindered nature of the nucleophile and also the significant degradation of the starting material as pentafulvenes can be quite susceptible to decomposition under basic conditions. They found that this decomposition could be reduced by adding copper powder, which allowed them to recover 20% of the starting material in addition to the 44% yield of the product. In the next step of the reaction, they used a heck coupling to complete the final ring of the tetracycle. Palladium undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon-oxygen bond, which then forms a pi complex with one of the alkenes present in the molecule. A migratory insertion occurs, forming a new carbon-carbon bond, and the palladium remains bound to the molecule in the form of an allyl complex. This is then attacked by an equivalent of acetate on the less sterically hindered convex side of the molecule, which displaces the palladium to complete the product. 
The new carbon-carbon bond is exclusively formed on the top face of the molecule, as the reaction is directed by the stereochemistry of the group tethered to the position alpha to the ketone. Following this reaction, the acetate was hydrolyzed using sodium hydroxide, furnishing the product with a 74% yield over two steps. The removal of the TIPS group allowed the researchers to crystallize the molecule, and the X-ray crystallography proved the structure of the compound, clearly showing its ball-like topology. The newly revealed hydroxyl group was isomerized in the next reaction using rhodium biscod tetrafluoroborate. The hydroxyl group is deprotonated by cesium carbonate, and the alkoxide coordinates to the rhodium complex, which also forms a pi bond to the alkene. A hydrogen abstraction then occurs, oxidizing the alkoxide to the carbonyl, and the hydride is then relayed to the beta position, carrying out a conjugate addition, forming an enolate intermediate. This enolate is then protonated at the top phase, forming the isomerized enone. The mechanism of this reaction has been studied using deuterated substrates, and these prove the intramolecular migration of the hydride. With the enone complete, methyl Grignard was then added directly to the reaction, and this underwent addition to the convex side of the molecule, forming the target product and an 82% yield. In the next step, a babbler dobbin oxidation was carried out on the newly produced tertiary hydroxyl group. Once again, PDC was employed, and this was attacked by the hydroxyl group, eliminating dipyridinium chromate to produce a chromate ester. This can undergo an intramolecular rearrangement, with the oxygen adding to the beta position triggering the elimination of the chromate group. An intramolecular hydrogen abstraction then occurs, forming the ketone in a 60% yield. As we saw with the previous compound, this could be crystallized after the removal of the TIPS group. Taking this compound forward, it then took part in a Grignard reaction. It was reacted with 2-butene magnesium chloride, and this added to the non-conjugated ketone. Unlike a typical Grignard addition, with the carbon bound to the magnesium as to the electrophilic centre, this system undergoes allylic addition through a six-membered transition state. This can occur for hindered ketones, where the addition step is slow, and instead, the magnesium first coordinates to the carbonyl, directing the allylic position of the nucleophile towards the electrophilic centre. The tetrahedral alkoxide intermediate then undergoes an intramolecular addition into the carbonyl of the enone system, forming a hemiacetal in a 42% yield upon protonation. In addition to this product, the compound with the opposite stereochemistry on the side chain was also formed in 22% yield, together with a direct addition product in an 18% yield. To complete the side chain, they then functionalized it using a Suzuki coupling. 9BBN was first added, and this undergoes addition to the terminal alkene, with the boron adding to the less directly hindered side. This reaction was heated for one hour and then cooled to room temperature after which aqueous sodium hydroxide, a solution of an alkenyl iodide in THF, and palladium tetricus were sequentially added. The palladium undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon iodide bond, and the iodide ligand is then displaced by hydroxide. The organoborane also reacts with sodium hydroxide, forming an activated borate that is able to undergo transmetallation with the palladium, leaving it bound to both organic fragments. A reductive elimination then occurs to form the product in an 87% yield. Taking this forward, a dehydration reaction was then carried out using thionyl chloride. The hemiacetal is in equilibrium with the ketohydroxyl compound, and the hydroxyl group can attack thionyl chloride, eliminating the equivalent of HCl. This activates it as a leaving group, and a hydrogen atom on the adjacent carbon can be deprotonated with lutidine. This eliminates sulfur dioxide and chloride and forms the target alkene in a 60% yield, along with a 37% yield of the exocyclic product. With the alkene now in place, all that remained was to remove the silyl groups. These were deprotected in a 96% yield with HF, completing the synthesis of bipolaride D. If you enjoyed the synthesis, join me in the next video, where we will look at the total synthesis of hypersamsone M.